So first we have fruits, and these can be any kinds of fruits. They can be whole fruits, they can be canned fruits, they can be dried fruits, they can be juice, um, so any kind of fruit. And then the next category is vegetables. So the same thing, you can have a fresh vegetable, you can have carrots, uh, spinach, but you can also have canned vegetables or frozen vegetables, and they're all the same. <coughs> Uh, next, we have grains. So in the grain category, there's something called whole grains. So whole grains are like wheat bread, or uh, a wheat tortilla, or brown rice. And the goal is to have half of your grains be the whole grains. And then refined grains are white bread, white rice, um, pasta, cereal, things like that. And then the next category is protein. So protein is going to be your meats, your fish, um, also eggs can give a lot of protein, or even things like peanut butter, uh, or also beans, uh, lentils. So I found this online, and I thought it was really helpful to understand a survey of different food groups. So you could just use your hand, and so if you look at the palm of your hand, that's about what a serving of meat should be. So it may seem kind of small. So if you go to a restaurant, they might give you a steak that's really big or a hamburger, but if you're cooking for yourself, a portion of meat should be about this size. Then if you're cooking pasta, it should be about this size. So once again, it might be, seem a little small. And then if you're cooking with butter or oil, it should be about this, this much. And then for peanut butter, this much. And then if you're having some ice cream after dinner, it's pretty small, only this much. And then, so that's just kind of some ideas about if you see a serving, that this is kind of an easier way than if you see ounces or grams. So just thought I'd share that with everyone. And the last two groups, is, uh, one is dairy. So one serving of dairy would be like a carton of milk you'd get in school, or a, a yogurt, or some cheese. And then the last category is oils, so any kind of salad dressing or oils that you cook with. So that's one tablespoon, so that was like this much. And one way that you can kind of see all the different food groups is if you have to pack your kids or if you have to pack your own lunch when you come to work or your own dinner or breakfast, you want to try to include something from all of those groups like we saw on that plate. So you want to try to have a grain, a protein, a fruit, a vegetable, and this box doesn't have it, but also some dairy too. So when I talked with Lawrenson, he said that something you guys were interested in was how to plan meals and how to have a, a good budget when you plan your meals. So sometimes if you think about what can I do for my family really fast and really cheap, you might think, I'll go to McDonald's. It's fast food and it's cheap. So this, I think, is from two years ago, so maybe the prices are a little bit different. But this is for four people at McDonald's getting all that food that you see there. So we won't worry about the nutrition. We're just going to talk about how much this costs. So for four people, it would be $27 for all this food. And if you remember the plate, this doesn't have very many things. There's no vegetables. There's no fruits. There's no dairy. And it costs $27. 
So if instead you go to the grocery store, you could spend $13 and buy a whole chicken, some bread, some potatoes, and some salad. And now you are spending a lot less money and you have some vegetables, you have some milk. It will take a little bit longer to cook, but you save quite a bit of money too. And the last example, for only $9, you can get the ingredients to make rice and beans with milk for four people. So that's $18 cheaper than going to McDonald's for one meal. And now you're also getting some vegetables from the peppers, you're getting some milk. So just showing that even though fast food seems like it might be a really cheap option, there's a lot of other options you can get if you plan some meals at home. So why would you want to plan your meals? You could just go to the grocery store and just pick things that look good, but you probably will spend a lot of money because they always put uh, all the things at the ends of the aisles that are really colorful and you can go with your kids, they might try to grab them. So if you plan, then you won't buy all those extra things. As you can see from the last meal, the rice and beans is more nutritious if you cook at home. And you'll get a lot more variety. If you go to McDonald's every night, it's the same food every time. So it might get pretty boring. And also, you can involve your family. You can have them tell you what kind of foods they like to eat and have them involved in helping you plan your meals. So here's some tips, just some ideas about meal planning. So first write everything down. Make your make a list of everything you'll need to buy to bring to the store with you and make a list of what meals you want to cook. So if you want to make two dinners next week, say I'm going to make spaghetti and I'm going to make hamburgers and then write down everything you'll need to make those. And then look at your family calendar and make sure you have time to cook the meals. So if you have to work on Tuesday through Friday, but you have off on Saturday, maybe you'll try to cook two meals on Saturday. And then look at what you already have in your pantry. I know that at my house, everything gets lost in the back. And so you might have some pasta, you might have some canned beans that you forgot were in there. So take a look every week and maybe try to use some of the things you already have. Next, find coupons for your local stores. You might get them in your mailbox for free. Or you also, if you have on your phone, you can, um, you can look for ones at your local stores. Or even if you walk into Walmart or Harris Teeter, sometimes they'll have the coupons right there in the front of the store. Uh, the next one is to buy in bulk. So if you eat a lot of rice, it might make sense to buy a big bag of rice and use it for a few weeks rather than just buy one small bag of rice. And it's normally a lot cheaper too. The next one is to buy produce that's in season. So that normally is cheaper because there's a lot more of it. Uh, and if it's something that's not in season, it might be cheaper to buy it frozen or canned instead. <laughs> uh, the next one is to double a meal that you cook and put one in your freezer. So if you make the lasagna, it might not be a lot of extra time to just make two and then just put one in your freezer and then you have another meal. And then the other idea is to cook once, eat twice. So if you bought that chicken and you only ate half of it, then you can keep the chicken and maybe make soup or make chicken salad, mix it with some mayonnaise, and then you have a whole other meal. And the last one is to involve your whole family. I know growing up, my parents would let me you know, wash vegetables or they could mix a salad or you would give them little tasks and they might be more likely to eat some of the food that you cook too if they're helping you make it. It'll make them more excited. Does anyone have any questions about this part of it? All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about are some common food 
mix. So this is something else that Lawrence had said you guys were interested in. So I just picked a couple, but if you guys have other things that you've heard on TV or from your friends that you want to talk about, we can talk about any of them. So first one is sometimes you hear that you shouldn't eat the whole egg. You should just eat the egg whites because they're low fat and they're better for your heart. But actually, unless your doctor tells you that you have really high cholesterol or if you have any medical problem that your doctor tells you, but otherwise you can eat an egg every day and you'll be perfectly healthy. Next one, carbohydrate, yeah, boiled eggs, yeah. You eat it one every day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You eat all the time. You can't eat the whole egg. No, no. I would eat the whole egg. So if you don't eat the yolk, um, some of the vitamins, you need fat to have your body use them. So if you don't have the fat from the yolk, then your body can't use the vitamins from the egg. So it's better. Yeah, yeah. If you were eating six eggs, but one egg, yeah, perfect to eat the whole egg. <laughs> Make sure you eat it by yourself. Play me a water. All right. The next one. Sometimes people tell you that carbohydrates, so bread, pasta, will make you fat. Uh, so you see some diets where uh, sometimes you may have heard of at the Atkins diet where you don't eat any bread. So you just eat meat and vegetables. It worked too. Right. It works. Yeah. Did it did it make you how did you make you moody and all meat? Yeah. Fried or whatever. You you can you can uh, the the rice the and you not, you didn't eat anything no, no. and it worked. All, all meat. It worked. How long did you do it? I did it for about uh, maybe two or three. Months. Wow. So it's true that it does work, but were you able to? What happened when you stopped? I guess I started gaining. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say a more healthy approach would be to maybe eat less. But then, you, but if you eat no carbohydrates, then it's really hard to do that for a really long period of time. So for every day, I would say to don't have your carbohydrates be cookies and cake and soda and white bread. But if you have some carbohydrates and you have some brown rice or some wheat bread, then it shouldn't make you fat. You can eat fried food. Yeah, fried anything. Wow. So I would I would not recommend doing that. Just eating fried food. But he ended up dying. That all also true. Also true. So they make you question. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked for you. And all of these are very individual. If something works for you, I would just encourage you to talk to your doctor before you do anything really radical. I just have a question. Yeah. <laughs> so is is gaining weight the only um, sign of being unhealthy? No, no. So you can have somebody, you can have two people standing up here and one person looks really skinny and the other one looks a little bit more overweight. And no, there's a lot of different measurements of health. So uh, those are things your doctor would tell you, but your cholesterol levels, which maybe you have tested at your doctor, or uh, how physically active you are. So you could be really skinny, but it could still be really hard for you to, to go climb a flight of stairs. Um, so you could be really skinny, but you could have no muscles. Um, so I would say that every person is different. And so just being fat or skinny, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily healthy. So. I have a question. Yeah. I thought, uh, in my family, age 30, they have diabetes. Uh-huh. So, um, I'm not worried. I don't want to get diabetes. Yeah, yeah. My family thinks that in the age 30, and they have diabetes. But, um, 
somebody told me if I eat fruits at night, I can get diabetes because they have sugar, the fructose. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I can eat at night, like if I have So that's another one that you hear different things, and your body doesn't know when you're eating different foods. So you can kind of think of your body like a car. You put gas in your car and then you can go, but it doesn't matter if you put gas in your car in the morning or at night. All it recognizes is that you have gas in your car. So I don't think that it will, would matter if you ate at night or in the morning, but you probably want to just pay attention to how much fruit you eat all day. So I would say don't eat any fruit, but make sure that you are eating just a few pieces of fruit, but I don't think it matters what time of day that you eat. I've been, uh, I've been doing this for uh, a little eight years, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been doing this for a well, then it, well, that's wonderful. Oh, well, that, that's wonderful. So it, oh, wow. Yeah, that's another big one, and that's wonderful. It exercise every day. So, but yeah, I think that it shouldn't matter what time of day you eat. Yeah. <laughs> so when you buy your canned fruit, do you buy it in the syrup, or does it, or is it just juice? Okay. So when you go and you look at the canned fruit, there's two kinds. One will probably say like heavy syrup or light syrup, and one might say 100% juice. So if it's 100% juice, I would say drink it. But if it's the syrup. I would, I would pour it. Yeah, you can mix it with water, but so the syrup that they're putting in there is the same syrup that they're gonna put like in your Coca-Cola. So it's added sugar. So I would say to either pour it out or next time you're at the store, try one that says 100% juice and see, see if you like it. Mo yeah, peaches, pineapple, they all should have different, different varieties. But they'll all be right in the same section. Oh yeah. Oh wow, of peaches, pineapple. Oh wow, that sounds really good. Yeah, so yeah, just look for that on the labels. Oh, good. Oh, wow, that's good. Sauces, 
But uh, otherwise, they're the same to frozen broccoli or a broccoli that's fresh. So you get them on the same Another one people say sometimes is that low fat is healthy. So, you, but that is also kind of like the eggs. It's not very true. You need fat in your diet. You don't need as much fat as a lot of us eat, but you do need fat. And also, so if you buy like a low fat muffin, they're going to put a lot of salt and sugar because if you take the fat out, it won't taste very good. So they're going to add salt, they're going to add sugar, they're going to add fake yeah, other stuff in there. So you're much better off just eating a small muffin with that than a big low fat muffin. So, and then the last one, I think this one's pretty interesting. Yeah, just look at what else, if it's, if it's no fat and no sugar, it's going to have a lot of the artificial right. sugars in there, which there's nothing, there's no studies that say that they're bad for you. That if, if you can eat them, some people have like stomach yeah. issues when they eat a lot of the fake sugar, but there's nothing wrong with the fake sugars if your body can, can handle it. Um, but if it's just low fat, it probably has more sugar in it. But if it's both, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, just stick with a small amount and it'll probably taste better. And you can probably be more satisfied with a little bit of the really good stuff than you know the whole tub of the, of the fake stuff. <laughs> no. Doesn't it freeze dry? <laughs> Uh, and then the last one is kind of like this too. So some people say that you should use honey or brown sugar or maybe some of you heard of agave nectar. There, there's, there's a new sugar every week. And everyone says those are better than just plain old white sugar. But kind of like your body doesn't know what time of day you're eating, your body doesn't know what kind of sugar it's eating either. So if it's the artificial sugars, those have no calories. But if, you, but if all these ones, they all have calories and your body is going to treat them all the same. So be careful. Um, and if you like plain white sugar better, just use that. Just don't use as much. But they all are going to make your body do the same thing. So those are the big ones. Any other ones people want to mention? Sure, okay, yeah, we skipped that one. So, sometimes, I guess, kind of a while ago, when everyone started buying microwaves, people would say that it destroys your food, that it takes away all the nutrition, but that's not true. Um, the, so sometimes, if you cook food really hot and really long, it will remove some of the nutrients. But if you use a microwave, you're probably cooking it a shorter amount of time because it cooks so fast. So don't worry that, oh, I'm not gonna get as many nutrients because I'm microwaving frozen broccoli. If that, if you eat broccoli and you're putting it in the microwave, that's better than not eating broccoli at all. So there is nothing wrong with microwaving food. Some people say eat baby with best Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the thing that they explain by longer sugar, they have cancer. So there, yeah, there, yeah, there are some studies that say that it causes cancer, but I wouldn't be too worried if you're just eating a little bit. If you're putting five, ten packages in your coffee every morning. But when they do those studies, they normally do it in mice, and they give them so much that none of us would ever be able to eat that much 
of any of that fake sugar. So I would be careful and don't use too much, but in small amounts, I wouldn't be too worried if you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that that some people say about the, the fake sugars is that they're a lot sweeter than sugar. So sometimes if you're so used to the those sugars, if someone gave you like a piece of chocolate cake, it may not taste as sweet to you because you're used to these really, really sweet sugars. So that's the only thing I would say maybe to be a little bit dangerous, but I wouldn't worry too much about the cancer causing it unless you're eating your body weight and fake sugar every day. What else? Any other things people have told you? Yeah, yeah, dark chocolate for the antioxidants, for the uh, help your body and yeah, there's a lot of research in the cocoa that is really good for you. Yeah. Could you tell more about what antioxidants are and what they do, like how they help? Sure. So, if you there's a lot of stress in I guess in the environment we can say so. If you work around a lot of pollution, or if you smoke, or your family members smoke, there's a lot of toxins that are going to go into your body. So antioxidants are in a lot of fruits and vegetables, and also in things that are really good, like dark chocolate, and they're going to help your body get rid of some of those toxic things. So that's kind of how it works. So yeah, any any produce are gonna have a lot of antioxidants. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, multivitamins. Yep. People say that have yes, antioxidants too. Same as dark chocolate. Yeah. So just like just like dark chocolate. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of studies that say if you have a glass of red wine, a piece of dark chocolate every day, that that's going to be, have antioxidants, and also they said that it helps your heart too. So, don't drink the whole bottle, but yeah, a glass of red wine. Make sure you don't do it before you start driving. Yes, yes, I don't want to tell you to do that. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be be a bit much. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so a lot. If you go to the store now, maybe some of you have noticed that there's a lot of they, they're called gluten free products. So maybe like next to the normal bread, there'll be a gluten free bread. So gluten is a protein that's in wheat. Um, and so some people can't digest that protein. So there's certain diseases and allergies where it'll make you really sick. But for most people, you can digest gluten just fine. So even though it's all over the place and, and people are saying it's healthier, if you don't know that you have those allergies, just buy the normal, the normal products. Because sometimes, just like the low fat, when they take out the wheat, they're going to be putting in other things to make the bread stay bread. So you're better off if your body can, can digest it to just eat the normal wheat products. But if you think you have a problem with digesting, then maybe talk to your doctor. That is true. That is true. Doctors can give you pills for your stress. Yes, that is true. So yeah, definitely with with anything, if you think you need to follow any special kind of diet, definitely talk to your doctor before you start experimenting on your own. So some people say that, but no, if if you have a regular carrot and an organic carrot, there is nothing the 
amount of vitamins, the amount of calories is gonna be exactly the same. The only thing that's gonna change is if you grow your carrots in soil in North Carolina or soil in California, they might be bigger, they might taste a little bit different. Um, and then the only other thing with organic sometimes uh, is if you want organic and they don't grow it in this area, like they have to ship it from somewhere else, it's in a truck for a long time, that could affect the nutrition, but if you just go to the store and there's two different things, and one's organic and one's not, they're both going to have the same healthy things for you. What makes it organic? It's a whole bunch of rules that the government sets how you do your farming, so you can't use pesticides. Um, so, but it's really kind of gray. It, it, there's, the rules are kind of gray. So you can sometimes get away with things and still have it be called organic. So I have to call my Spanish professor now. Uh, I'm taking medical Spanish. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, you can write them down and I will provide answers for you. So thank you so much. Everybody, let's thank Lindsay for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.